Welcome everybody to another quickie on the Automator Plus channel. Today we are gonna be looking at effects and how to change the properties of the effects that are applied to your clips within your active sequence. Grab a cup of coffee and stick around. Welcome everybody and wouldn't it be amazing if you could get a grip of and alter the effects and the properties of those effects that have been applied to your clips within Premiere Pro. Today we're going to look at doing exactly that. If you haven't yet, uh, head over to our GitHub page, links in the description. And over there we've got the uh, code snippets for all of the tutorials that we've done, uh, all of these quickies. Uh, you can see here we've got our auto hotkeys, uh, tutorials, and our Adobe Extensibility Platform. Really need to rename that. <laughs> um, let's buy the extend script. Anyway, uh, so drop into our GitHub. Uh, we've got all the uh, tutorials in here. We uh, got nice blogs for, for some of the videos. And for the quickies, we've got little code snippets for you. Today, we're going to be looking at changing clip properties. And most of this you would have seen uh, from previous videos, right? So again, this video, I'm assuming you've got your VS Code installed, uh, you've heard of the launch.json file, you are able to set up a new debug session connected to your host, Premiere Pro. Uh, if not, check out our previous videos, uh, we, we cover that quite in detail. So this first bit of uh, code, uh, if you've been with us on the channel for a bit, you would have seen. Um, so this is just my preferred way to get a grip on the video clip that we want to investigate, right? So I declare a few of these intermediate variables. Um, first, I get a grip on the sequence, then on all the tracks, then on the singular track based on this track number uh, that we specify at the top here. And then I get a grip on the video clip uh, based on this clip number. Great. So once we've got our clip, uh, it's got this component uh, attribute, um, and you can check that out on this uh, API documentation, right? So a item within the track is going to be a track item. Yes, indeed. So, um, so if we check out this track item, you'll see components um, and the components associated with this tracker. Uh, this can be intrinsic transformations as well as video and audio effects. Right, so anything weird, any effects that you add to your clips, be it audio or video, uh, is gonna sit in this components attribute of the track item. All right, so because we're working with video clips um, in this example, I've gone ahead and called this effects. So I'm getting all of my components and dropping it into this variable called effects. And here we've got some would say a daunting for loop, right? Um, so we've discussed a bit for loops uh, in, in one of our previous videos, go check that out. If for loops are completely foreign to you, um, again, here we're gonna assume that you, you know how to use one for loop, uh, but now we're gonna go one step further and do two for loops, a for loop within a for loop, right? So just a quick recap, for loops used to iterate through things. Um, so we're gonna be going and looping through all of the effects that have been applied to this clip but then we don't want to just loop over these effects. We actually want to get into each effect and then loop through all the properties within that effect. So that's where our double loop is coming from, right? So for loops, usually following the syntax, uh, we've got some dummy variable, uh, usually i, right? Um, and you'll see very often if you've got two for loops, uh, the first for loop will be i, the second one j. We've got another for loop within there called k, right? So it's just these little um, iteration variables. But here, basically, we are going to loop through all of them um, and we're going to print out what is the actual effect name, right? So that's this display name property. Then we're going to go into each effect, right? So plurals with encoding really use them smartly, right? So here I've called effects. Um, those are all my effects. Every time I loop through, I'm assigning it to an effect, right? So here we actually have an effect. Um, so one effect, right? Then I'm saying, cool, let's display the name of that one effect. But then for that one effect, give me all of your properties and let's actually go to each of those properties and display the display name, right? 
So this is a bit uh, confusing for you. Uh, I'm just gonna hit run and I think a lot more would make sense. Uh, so I'm here on change clips properties, great stuff, running that and our debug console, we get this beautiful printout. VS Code tells me uh, a little printout in our debug console, uh, which is where this right line is gonna be writing to, right? Uh, this tells me that I've got two effects that are applied to my zero with clip on my zero with track, right? Uh, encoding terms, first clip, first track uh, within Premiere Pro terms. So the effects that I've got applied to this clip is opacity and motion, um, and the properties that I can actually address of these um, is opacity, blend mode, um, see we've got blend mode twice here, uh, position scale, scale width, there's actually like an invisible little property here that we're not seeing within the, the motion. Um, rotation, anchor point, and anti-flicker. Right, so let's just jump into Premiere Pro and confirm that that is what we're seeing, right? So I'm just opening my effect controls here. Uh, I've selected this first clip. And lo and behold, on the video clip, we've got two effects that are applied, uh, motion and opacity. Um, and yes, this time remapping is also applied, but you can see that that all FX is uh, colored out. So that is not available to us via the components uh, attribute of the track item, right? Um, for, for interest sake, let's actually just uh, change this video tracks over here, right? So I'm gonna be a bit, bit naughty here, um, make this audio tracks, uh, but I'm gonna keep my variables called video tracks. Um, and all that I want to illustrate to you here is that here we're now actually getting the audio effects and properties, right? So I've changed audio tracks here. So now video tracks is audio tracks. Um, but basically we're getting this volume and channel volume uh, effects and the properties associated with them, as you can see. Cool, so we can alter these uh, if, we, if we like. So let's just set this back to, to video tracks. Ooh. Um, yeah, so let's maybe just stand still here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a breakpoint within this second for loop. Um, and what that's gonna allow me to do is actually step through, right? So I'm gonna set a breakpoint, kick off VS Code's debugger, and it's gonna run until it hits that breakpoint. Once it hits that breakpoint, it's gonna ask me, hey, do you wanna step forth? Um, and then I'll be able to show you what each of these effect and property variables now that we're here, let's actually declare a little property value here. So I don't actually have a handle on the individual property here. Um, let's do this. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. Um, so I'm doing that because I actually want to look at this property, right? I want to be able to investigate this property. Um, and with my breakpoint over there, this property will be assigned before it hits the breakpoint, and therefore I'll be able to look at it. Cool, so to, to be able to, to show you what is happening here, um, we're gonna watch some variables, but you'll see if we actually watch the uh, uh, effect variable, uh, you'll see it's just a component, right? So we can't really drill into it that much from this uh, watch panel. So what I actually like to do is let's just create a little uh, dummy variable again, or dummy intermediate uh, display name. And I'm just gonna go and call that the display name so that we can actually see how this thing is working through here. And similarly here, cool. Cool, so we are in VS Code here and I've just set a breakpoint within our second for loop. Uh, but I've also defined these little intermediate variables, uh, the effect display name and the property display name. And that is just for me to be able to actually assign some of these uh, to be watched, right? So this is a nice little extra feature of VS Code that we can just utilize. So I'm actually gonna say, hey, go and watch that variable for me. Watch that guy, watch that guy, and watch that guy. Cool, so if we kick off our debugger, it's gonna run um, and gonna run up to this uh, breakpoint. And you can see that 
as we are stepping through this, uh, the i and the j variables change, right? So we are here on i zero. So this is still our first effect, uh, but we've gone to our first property, right? And here we can actually see the value of our effect display name variable, which is this guy, um, and our property. So we in blend mode now, right? So if I step over this again, uh, we are gonna get blend mode again. Uh, so remember with there it was twice there. Uh, then we're moving on to motion and you can see that our i increased there now. Um, then j is increasing, we're moving on to scale, scale width, um, there's that empty property. And there we've looped through all, through both for loops, right? So I hope that sort of illustrates the, the idea of a nested for loop. Um, so this is just a two level nested for loop. Um, and basically we've got two things that we need to iterate over, right? We've got effects, but then within each effect, we've got properties. So we've got to loop through all the effects, but then given each effect, we need to loop through all the properties, right? So that's why we're getting that nested for loop. Cool, so that's that. Um, next, let's try and change some of these values, right? So the Premiere Pro API allows us to do that. Let's go ahead and comment all of this little for loop out for us. And this is how you do it, right? Uh, so you can get the value of a property that has been applied to a clip by going to the effect number, right? So remember, we've got this effects uh, list that's got all of our effects. Uh, if we go to our first effect, uh, in this case, uh, it'll be our motion, right? Effect one is motion. And if we go to its first property, uh, it's gonna be scale, right? So keeping in mind, programming always starting at zero. So the first property is actually the second property, right? Um, and then we can call this get value method on that property, which will give us our current scale. Right, so we wanna alter some of these values, um, but just to, to get you into it, um, I'm just gonna add this current scale and adjust scale variables to my watch list. Uh, put a little breakpoint right here at the end um, and kick these off. Cool, so what's just happened here? We see current scale has gotten the value of 100 and adjusted scale 150. How do we get that? So we've got this effects list, right? Which basically contains all the effects that have been applied to our, our clip. Um, and on second thought, let me actually include this, uh, this for loop. Um, it's just printing out things and then we can actually bring together what's happening there. Beautiful. So here I am looking at the first, so this current scale that I've, uh, variable that I'm defining here, calling its column scale because I know I'm actually getting the scale value here. Um, how do I know that? Oh, we've got this effect list, right, that we looped through earlier. Um, and I'm going to the first effect, right? So this is actually this motion effect. Right. So it's actually the second, but the first in the list. Second in the list, first element. Cool, and then I'm going to the properties of that effect. Um, and again, going to the second property within the list, the first value, uh, that's gonna be scale. And I'm gonna call this get value on it, right? So that'll actually give me the current scale of my clip. And we can see what has been assigned there is 100, right? So then I've got the adjusted scale. I'm just timesing it by 150. And if we jump into Premiere Pro, uh, and then this is basically how you set it, right? We're just going to, again, that, that effect, that property, and we're setting it to, to this adjust value. Cool, so let's jump into Premiere Pro and see what happens if we uh, execute this, this little piece of code. Um, and what we are expecting is we'd like to change, adjust the scale of the clip on track one, first clip, right? So Premiere Pro, I've got it open. I've only got one clip on my, my timeline here. And basically we want to address this motion effect and we want to bump up the scale, right? So I'm gonna just maximize my program monitor here. Great stuff. Get this down here uh, and execute this code. And boom, bam, there we go. We've, we've zoomed in. Uh, if I execute this again, zooming in again, right? Because we've actually got that get the current scale and then multiply it by 1.5. So we're, we're bumping it up every time. Nothing stops us though to go the other way. So we can go 0.5 and then we'll actually start zooming out. 
Cool guys! So today we looked at how you can get and set the values of properties of effects that have been applied to your clips within Premiere Pro. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe. If you've got any questions about any of the API things, <laughs> if you've got questions about uh, any of the other API functions or methods, uh, please drop them in the comments below and we'll look at making a video of them in the future.